you will be returned to Allah. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَى Allah. Make sense? Allah chose to say, you will be returned to the one who knows the unseen and the seen. What does that have to do with this conversation? What it has to do with is, people that look religious on the outside, but don't actually have faith on the inside affecting their hearts. So, the death which you are running from, فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ It is going to meet you. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ Then you will be returned back to the nor of the unseen and the seen. فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Then he will inform you of what you used to do. That's the, that's the last ayah for the day. Separated, so farra uh, تَفِرُّونَ uh, مِنْهُ The death you are running from comes from farfara or iftarra when you show your teeth when you're laughing and to, to, when someone moves in a quick fashion when your mouth moves going like ah, 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 like that's that's farra or iftarra farfar al ba'ir when a camel shakes its body al uh, mafar means a place to flee or run away from actually the wise meaning is not that, that important a well fed lamb wow that's a really well fed lamb <laughs> i think it's it's called that because its fur shakes and stuff cuz it's so fat but anyway, so the idea of far is something that moves quickly. Like quick running, quick dashing. Uh, escaping also is, is, is farar. Farrat bin qaswara. Right? Donkeys are, mules are there, and they see a lion coming, and the donkeys run, dash for it. That's the word farra also. Allah says, tell them, say this. No doubt about it, the death which you are running away from. How can somebody run away from death? They're not running away from death. They're running away from the conversation about death. They're running away from the preparation of death. They're running away from facing the fact of death. They're running away from that. Allah says, you can run from that all you want. فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Then no doubt about it, it is going to meet you. Arabic students will notice here, مُلَاقِيكُمْ is a mudaf and mudaf ilayh. لَاقَ يُلَاقِي لِقَاءً وَمُلَاقَاتًا فَهُوَ مُلَاقٍ This is an ism fa'il from laqa. Which means to meet. In the Arabic language, when an ism fa'il, mulaq, uh, or mulaqi, is used as a mudaf, it means it's already happened. So, innahu mulaqin iyakum. That would mean it will meet you. Mulaqikum actually means it's already met you. It's as good as already done. It's guaranteed. You have to think of it as immediate, it's already passed. You know, the difference between he is going to help him as opposed to he is his helper. When you say he's his helper, the help is already done. If I say he's going to teach him, the teaching hasn't happened yet. But if I say he's his teacher, the teaching is already happening. It is your meter. Not going to meet you. It literally says meter. But it, it, what's meant to say is it's going to meet you. But the language used is it's consider it done. Consider it already done. That's how immediate we should be thinking about death. Then he says, ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ so, uh, mulaqiya, Let's look at laqiya also. Laqiya actually means something that's, that's thrown in your path. And laqa, yulaqi means to meet someone. To come into contact with someone. Uh, ilqa, like, you know, Musa alayhi salam was told to throw the staff. That was alqiha ya Musa. So ilqa was used for that, uh, for that purpose. So, uh, Laqa means when you just stumble upon somebody, you run into somebody. This is why enemy forces, when they clash against each other, that's actually called talaqi. إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانَ also. Or iltiqa actually. قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ آيَةٌ فِي فِئَتَيْنِ إِلْتَقَتَى In Surah Ali Imran, when the Muslims and the enemies met on the Battle of Badr, that was فِئَتَيْنِ إِلْتَقَتَى Right? And similarly, when, when uh, the oceans collapse into each other, Maraj al Bahraini yaltaqiyan from the same origin when they crash into each other. So the same way death will come crashing towards you. It'll just run right into you, bump right into you. It's not gonna come with like a four meeting or forewarning. It's just gonna show up. Then you will be returned. Now let's focus on the word returned. Ridda is the shortening of the chin when you when you pull your face backwards. And radid is a, whatever organ is shrinking. 
Radad is a camel that drinks water, meaning it pulls back its udders. Now, the, the, the important thing is rudud darahim. Basically, if you give somebody fake money and they give it back to you, that's not real money. Those are not real euros. Like you just drew an E on there and gave it to me. Then that's mardud. It's rejected because it's not of any value. So there's the Arabic word for returning, and there's returning when you have no value. Return because it's faulty. Like when you re- somebody ships you a product. I'm looking, you guys get Amazon here? You got Amazon? Okay, you got Amazon. Because some countries don't get Amazon. I'm so surprised. Anyway, it's the Dajjal. It's every, it should be everywhere. Okay, anyway. So, <laughs> I know, yeah, my weird humor. Anyway, so you get, you get a faulty product on Amazon and you return it because it's faulty. That product would be mardud. That would be mardud. That's, that's rad. Okay. Allah says you will be returned... Meaning, you are going to be returned in a faulty state. These people are being told you're faulty. If it was just a normal return, it would be thumma turja'oon. Thumma turja'oon. Or ta'udun. Or, or tu'a, you know, so there would be different words that were, or tu'adun actually. But here, turaddun means you are going to be returned back as faulty as you are. Meaning, you're not going to come to Allah pure. You're going to come to Allah impure. And that's inside the word rad, you know. Now, ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ You will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the seen. Why is it important for Allah to say the knower of the unseen and the seen instead of just saying you will be returned to Allah? ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ Allah. Make sense? Allah chose to say you will be returned to the one who knows the unseen and the seen. What does that have to do with this conversation? What it has to do with is People that look religious on the outside but don't actually have faith on the inside affecting their hearts. And when we go back to Allah, how religious I looked on the outside, how religious I sounded on the outside, how religious I practiced on the outside, that's all shahada. Shahada means you can see it. You can see somebody praying. You can see somebody giving a lecture. You can see somebody reciting Quran. You can see somebody dressed religiously. You could see that. But what you cannot see is what? Somebody may be worshipping Allah in the scene, but running away from death in their hearts. Right? Because this running from death is not a seen thing, it's an unseen thing. Guys, sorry for the interruption in the middle of this lecture. Just before you continue, I want to let you know and encourage you that I want you to sign up for BayanaTV.com and help others sign up or even sponsor students for BayanaTV.com so we can create worldwide communities of students that are studying the meanings and the benefit and the wisdom of the Qur'an uh, and are inshallah ta'ala spreading that in their own circles. Thanks so much. What is going to be exposed on Judgment Day? Something that could not be exposed in this life, which is the unseen. So notice... Allah put priority over the unseen here. He said, Alim al Ghaib wa Shahada. He said, You will be returned to the one who knows the unseen and also the seen. All both both of them together. You know, this takes us back to the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Kitab is seen, hikmah is the unseen spirit of it, isn't it? Alim al Ghaib wa Shahada. bima. And by the way, also Tazkiyah. Tazkiyah, there's a physical washing in this religion, which is seen, and there's a spiritual washing, which is unseen, right? So all these terms are now tying in with each other. فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Then he shall inform you of what you used to do. Again, coming back to the actions. First it was what you prioritized. What you prioritized. Then he says what you used to do, the things you were up to. Your actions are all going to be laid out in front of you. So in other words, Allah is now interested not just in our claim to our faith, he wants to see where our actions are. You know, put, put your actions where your mouth is. Not just put your money where your mouth is. Right? ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And lastly, just a quick comment about amal. Uh, amal means to do something. And fi'l also means to do something. But when you do something without thinking about it, it's a fi'l. So any action can be a fi'l. Breathing right now for me is a fi'l. When I open my eyes and I see you guys, that's a fi'l. But if I choose one person to stare at, then that would be a amal. Because it's a conscious act. So amal includes intent. Fi'l does not include intent necessarily, but amal absolutely includes intent. So Allah is saying, He will inform you of the things you did intently, knowingly, consciously. Okay. Now we're coming to the most exciting part before the break. I need five minutes, guys. Is that okay? 
Five minutes. Inshallah. Okay. We've gone, we finished two sections of the surah today. And I'm going to give you a review of section one. Section one was like this. Everything in the skies and the earth does to speed. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ You remember that? Then he was the king. Al-Malik. Then Al-Quddus. Then Al-Aziz. Then Al-Hakim. Then Allah said, He sent a messenger among the unlettered. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ Yeah? Then he said, يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ His signs. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ He purifies them. You can see the connection, right? وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ Which comes from the authority. وَالْحِكْمَةِ He teaches them wisdom. And finally he said, وَإِن كَانُوا مِن قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ They were utterly lost before. Notice the bottom. First he sent a messenger to who? The Ummiyin. And at the end he described they were utterly lost before. And then finally he ends, Others will be joining, and this is a favor from Allah. وَآخَرِنَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمُ Notice in the beginning, the opening, the blue and the blue at the bottom. In the beginning, the whole skies and the earth are doing tasbih. And by the end, more of the world is doing tasbih. Right? Because the ummah is increasing and tasbih is increasing. This is a summary of which section? The first section, first four ayat. Okay. We just wrapped up section 2. First thing, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا التَّوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارًا مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ They failed to carry the burden of the Torah and they lied against the revelations. كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ Okay. Then Allah says, وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Yeah? Then Allah said, say if you have special status with Allah, what was that special status called? Awliya. Yeah? قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَحَدُوا إِنْ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ لِلَّهِ مِنْ دُونِ النَّاسِ فَتَمَنَّوا الْمَوْتِ Then wish for what? Death. Okay. Then Allah says, لَا يَتَمَنَّوْنَهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ They're not going to wish for death because of what their hands sent forward, the, the priorities. Then Allah says, وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ Allah knows the wrongdoing people. Then He said, say death will meet you, the one you're running from, it will meet you, and then Allah will inform you of what you used to do. Yes? So this is what we went through just now. Now watch. Let's start over. No, 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 wait, wait, it's coming. <laughs> what was the first thing? You feel the burden of the Torah. And you lied against the revelations. And the fourth item was, you won't wish for death because of your past actions. Now what are the past actions? What are the past actions? Fail the Torah and lied against the revelations. Isn't it? The second thing he said was, Allah doesn't guide the wrongdoing people. And then he said, Allah knows the wrongdoing people. The third thing he said was, say if you assume the status with Allah, wish for death. And then he says, death will meet you and he will tell you what you actually used to do. So you'll notice, one and four, two and five, and three and six correspond to each other. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So that's the first two sections of the surah. What I'm trying to show you in these lectures also at the end of every section, I failed to do it in the last one, is how the Qur'an is organized. You don't sense it when you're reading it. You can't tell that there's actually a structure to the Qur'an. And every time I study a surah and I work on a surah, I also work on the structure of that surah. How is Allah c constructing the arguments? How are they being built? Now, do you see how 3D this is? Like how, you, how are you going to... Can you speak like this? The Qur'an was given to the Prophet ﷺ as speech. Surah Al-Jum'ah was revealed at once. He recited the whole surah to the Sahaba. We're going to study that tomorrow. When was the surah given? I held back from that story because the ayat of Jum'ah are coming. Right? So that, that, the whole surah given at once, was it written or spoken? Spoken. And I have to construct a PowerPoint presentation to show you how well organized the speech is. How structured the speech is. This is actually more and more evidence how the Qur'an is actually not spoken. It is written. It's written in the Lawh Mahfuz and it's spoken by the Prophet ﷺ. But it's not just any speech. It's the written speech of God. SubhanAllah. Okay, let's take our break for Maghrib. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum everyone. There are almost 50,000 students around the world 
that are interested on top of the students we have in studying the Qur'an and its meanings and being able to learn that and share that with family and friends and they need sponsorships, which is not very expensive. So if you can help sponsor students on Bayina TV, please do so and visit our sponsorship page. I appreciate it so much and pray that Allah gives our mission success and we're able to share the meanings of the Qur'an and the beauty of it the world over.